And thus begins another cast ranger. Hi. I'm here. Yeah. Emily's here too. Hi. <laughs> How's everyone doing this week? Um I'm good. Fall Guys is now free to play on all platforms, so that's cool. And surprisingly, my first match that I came back to in two years, because I raged quit that game because I just was so fed up with it. My first game back in two years, and I won two games in a row. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. i just like to point out this episode is not sponsored by Fall Games, now free to play on all platforms with cross-save. Also they, added Mothra, also, they added Mothra, King Ghidorah, and Mechagodzilla's costume. I know they have it on. They have it on Switch, and I haven't gotten it yet because everything has been happening so much. They're also adding Pusheen costumes to Fall Guys, so Kelly's gonna probably get those when they oh, come. Oh, like out. the cat. Yeah. All right, we've already talked about this too much. Cue the roll call. We are live. <laughs> Loading. Broadcast. Tempered zeal. Blue caster. Super Ichi. Mountain impulsive. Gray caster. Lay. Spark of courage. The power of dreams. Orange caster. Global soft perka. Broadcasting hundreds of opinions across the world. Radio Sentai Cast Ranger. On air. Welcome to Radio Sentai Cast Ranger, episode 393. It's episode Piplup. Your episode Best Boy? Jerry stole Blaze's fire and he's about... Oh. Okay. I thought he was oh, going to be angry about it. Here. Hi, Blazy Coon. Yeah, I was... I feel like I haven't heard from you in, like, forever. <laughs> You're so what? busy with your life now. You're so blazy. <laughs> I'm too angry about what happened today. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it about the America thing? Oh yeah, no, we won't we, we won't get into that, but no, yeah, that's that's uh, that's absolute yeah. horseshit. Yeah. Um, really bad, but we that is not our domain. Um okay, so uh for those who might be tuning in for the first time, we are a bunch of Canadians who get together every week to talk about common rider, super sentai, and a third thing. Uh our topics for this week are common rider revise episode forty Dawn Brothers episode 16 and episode 3, 4, and 5 of the Common Rider Veil vale specials. Uh, yes. Yeah. But before that... Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, uh, so like I got myself a little treat because I've been wanting this for a very long time, but ooh, it's loading. Ooh, I finally it's acquired loading. a fake... Uh, I acquired a figure arts of metal build and nice. he is I just gorgeous. Love, I just love Vader in the background like, hey, what's going on in over here? Oh, it's because <laughs> I, I, it's cause I've, uh, I bought a Black Series Imperial Probe Droid, so I just wanted my Vader next he, to it. He generally no, looks like he's just leaning over curiously. The, the metal build figure arts cool because it also comes with heads for uh, Key Dragon Hazard and Kaizoku Russia Hazard. Oh, and then it also comes with the uh, like the the train bow and the uh, and the uh, crosses weapon to go with them. So cool, the, yeah. The beat closer stack figure. Yep. Or beat hip crosser. Hip parade. Hip -a, hip -a, hip parade. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah. Uh. It was my birthday this last Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. Happy birthday, birthday Thank you. Some people and apparently everyone every, apparently everyone thinks you're, you're in your twenties. I was about to say I'm 34, but a lot of people I told that to over this past week were really surprised. People thought I was oh. in my mid to late twenties, and I guess that's flattering. Oh yeah, I'm turning 33 like uh, in a couple weeks, and like legit, everyone thinks I'm like 20, and I'm like that, that's flattering, but no. <laughs> He's a strapping young lad of 14. With the mentality of probably like a teenager. So. <laughs> At age six, I was born without a face. <laughs> oh, apparently, apparently Aaron was in fucking Toronto today or yes, something. Yes, because their fucking Toronto show for their Game Grumps Live is happening right now. Damn it. Yeah. Damn you and your commitment, Seechi. Yeah. <laughs> See, if you wanted to go to Gay Grumps Live, I wouldn't, and you didn't want to do Cash Ranger, I wouldn't have cared. <laughs> I would have been like, that's fine. Go have fun. 
mm, well it for me it's more of a concern i'm, I'm just it's my back yeah mm. i'm sorry yeah anyways i won't bore anyone with the details we are here to talk about men in tights all right uh do you have any news yes first it is time for news mode news mode so our first story is we got some information regarding the upcoming summer movies for Revice and Don Brothers. Uh, the most important revelation of which was a new rider potentially, or a new form for Vale. Thank you, Decker, for showing us the zoom in. This appears to be a new suit that is using the Vale driver with some sort of blue attachment on the side. Uh, you know, from other close-ups of the Veil Driver, we've seen little slots that look like something attaches to it, and I guess this is what it's for. There's some sort you, of new rider or new form for Veil. That no, uses... it has to be. It has to be Veil because you, if you see down below in the poster, there's Genta. Genta's there, and also in the preview for next week's episode, he goes to George, going, "Hey, I, I want to help." Yeah, so Comrade Veil is definitely coming back. But because I'm going to get into more of this, but like the, the movie itself is called Revice the Movie Battle Familia. So they seem to really be focusing on them as a family. So my immediate thought is, what if this form happens via Genta and Yukimi fusing double style? That would oh. be interesting. Also, yeah, they used fucking Bravo's cape for another rider. <laughs> yeah, so it turns out in the Birth of Chimera special, there's two riders with similar suits. The one that doesn't have the cape is Kamen Rider Chimera, and the one that does have the cape is Kamen Rider Daimon. Yeah, and he's apparently played by King Kusagi, aka Ninja Black from Cocker Ranger. So that's fucking badass. So which means he's done, he's been in Kamen Rider now, Super Sentai. He's uh, Ultraman powered, and he was in Godzilla Final Wars. So he's just like got a to the Toku equivalent of like when people is, have every award. He, this man has gone full fucking circle for Tokusatsu. Is this the first actor who's done all the major Toku franchises? It has to be. I think so. But also, uh, yeah, a Love Cub apparently grows up or something. Yeah, into like a guy with a hood on. Uh, where's that screenshot? Something, something. Kamen Rider Evil comes back. Love Cov gets an adult form. Uh, fucking Vice is has red eyes in that one shot, so maybe he's evil now. I don't see the shot in the news that I'm looking at, so someone will have to post the screenshot. We have eleven riders now in Revice. Damn. But I'm most interested in this new blue veil. Yeah, there's the shot. But yes, yeah, I'm super interested in this new blue veil form because now this is basically the blue demons driver recolor I wanted. Oh yeah, this wasn't in my news feed, but there was an image promoting the movie that shows Tamaki is getting the over demons power. Yeah, fucky car. <laughs> Hooray! Hey, you can <laughs> die along with fucking daddy ninja. No, no. We'll get no, into that. No yeah <laughs> but uh so this is basically the answer to the blue demons driver recolor that i wanted so maybe if they announce this as like a pack or even if they do them separately maybe i'll buy them oh my god so that means we have three versions of the same belt yep <laughs> well i oh mean it's it's just a it's an attachment for the belt it's not a separate belt oh okay Unless it is, maybe it is a separate. I don't know, but it looks like an attachment, and we've seen the pegs in the veil driver where it would attach. Yeah. All right. So into the actual news story. Um, so the revised movie Battle Familia starts with a hijacking incident caused by a mysterious organization, and among those kidnapped passengers are Genta and Yukimi. In order to save them, the Igarashi siblings head towards Area Six Six Six. Uh, but they're stopped by Azuma. They're stopped by Azuma, played by Kane Kosugi, a man who made a contract with Gif and transforms into Kamen Rider Diamond. Uh, the because of the crazy scientist Masato Toki, played by Norito Yashima, and Sheik, voiced by Shingo Fujimori, the demons of the Igarashi siblings, Vice Kagero and Lovkov, are now outside their bodies, attacking them. 
So, okay, so that's uh, that, that's okay, what this shot was. Hmm. So is that these evil vice? Yeah, so they've been turned evil and unleashed. Uh, Kagura comes back. That's gonna be interesting. Yes, with the siblings hurt, their mother Yukimi witnessing it, and with tears of determination, she unleashes their family bond. So she creates this new veil form. Huh? Crazy. All right. And then moving on to the Don Brothers movie, new first love hero, which is a reference to Haruka's manga. Uh, oh, that the Don Brothers are offered to appear in a movie based on Haruka's manga that she allegedly plagiarized. Okay, uh, who owns the rights to it then? If, so we think you ripped yeah. off this. We think you ripped this off, but we're gonna make a movie based on it anyway. Whoa! You like to be in it. <laughs> Even the Noto get parts in it? What the hell? That's gonna be funny. Why not? Uh, we have the theme songs for the movies. The revised movie theme is called Dance Dance, so being sung by Da Ice featuring Subaru Kimura, so the same guys who did the theme song. Oh, they should have got they should have gotten uh, what were they called? Da Pump. That was like the name of the the, the guys who did the party song. I was listening. That song came up in my fucking phone while I was driving home today. Buddy, buddy, I can think buddy, of buddy, old buddy. jail nights. Yeah. Uh, and, party. and then for the Don Brothers movie, they're just doing a movie version of the show's opening theme, Orikosa Only One. Well, it's an awesome song, I think. I, I must reluctantly admit I'm warming up to it. That's okay. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah! yeah! So well, I, like yeah. ending, I like the ending theme yeah. just a bit more. The ending theme is better. Yeah. Uh, the double billing of both movies is set for July 22nd release. Uh, All right. And then we have some more movie information specifically regarding the extra cast members. So uh, let's see. So he is, the first one here is Issei Mamehara as Nozomi Otani. He is a spin-off star from J01, an idol group. This is his first acting role. Uh, and then... Oh, no, this, this isn't Chimera. He's just a character in the movie. And then the second character, played by Shohei Hashimoto, who is in Dimension High School, plays Ryu Mukai, who becomes Kamen Rider Chimera. And then we already mm. talked about Kane Kosugi, who is Kamen Rider Diamond. Uh, let's see. Kosugi is not the only Cocker Ranger actor appearing in this. Teruaki Ogawa, who is Ninja Red, will play the town doctor, Gai Kai. Huh. Nin Ninja White is playing Nozomu's mother. And Seiji Takaiwa is playing Nozomu's father. Whoa. In addition, his son Shinta Takaiwa will appear as well, holding a vice stamp. Lastly, Meiku Harukawa, who is in Ultraman Trigger, is in this, but they didn't say as who. Oh, okay. What I'm super interested about is in this news article, there's a shot of George wearing the Chimera driver. Mm. Are we going to see him henshin again? I hope so. I'm still waiting for that Ultimate Rider. We both said I hope so at the same time. Maybe this was the Ultimate Rider. Hard to say. But as we talked about last week, it's being directed by Koichi Sakamoto, which means the action will be good. And that is also releasing July 22nd. Cool. Cool. Next on our news docket, the announcement of SH Figure Arts for Kamen Rider Genmu Muso Gamer. Yep, because Genmu off. has to get what? everything. Oh, sorry, what was that, Emily? I just said he looks like Sephiroth. Yeah, the, yeah. it's clearly Sephiroth hair. And, and and also that he got he just straight up got a non transformed figure. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, uh, no, they have to they have to make Gemu stuff of everything. Yeah. Uh, so let's see, one fifty millimeters tall comes with replacement hair parts. Uh, okay. premium Bandai Web exclusive, ninety three fifty and November release. Yeah, it's gonna be like almost one hundred and fifty, like to two hundred dollars. Oh God, <laughs> it's hair like reaches up and around it's like fucking doc ock tentacles <laughs> creepy oh yeah 
And next on the SH Figure Arts announcement uh, release, I was surprised to see Common Rider Sabala from Saber. Yep. Woo. Very nice design. Yep. Uh, let's see, 140 millimeters tall, comes with the Naroshi Premium Bandai Web Exclusive, 7,700 yen November release. All right. Yeah, so there's a point for the female riders. And next, we have the announcement that all of Juko B Fighter, the Japanese series that was adapted into Big Bad Beetleborgs, has now been completely subbed by Mega Beast Empire. Yeah, they also just announced, uh, like, we're getting the blaster. That was my next news story. <laughs> <laughs> the Input Magnum Complete Edition. Another premium Bandai. Yep, good old P Bandai. Uh, item is 160 millimeters tall, 270 millimeters wide, die cast parts, four different modes, reprint series, blue beat, and mission mode. So it's got a lot of different sounds and cut and, and features. Oh, yeah, everyone's pissed off that like they announced the figure arts of Aguilera, and it's just like, oh, <laughs> you haven't done live yet. <laughs> yeah, and and two Kaiser, I guess. <sighs> yeah, I like. Okay, I know this is gonna sound weird, but like Two Kaiser seems to be getting like a huge like kind of following, and I just like I don't I don't like it. Me either. I, yeah, I, no, yeah, no, seven, yeah, screw Daiji. He's he's unhinged. <laughs> he's going through his character arc. Leave him alone. Eh. He'll come back. Yeah, he just needs Kagero back. Yeah. Um. Maybe he does come back before the movie happens, and that's how he's able to be pulled out and separated in the movie. Yeah, like I said, I we're gonna see live. Yeah. We're gonna see live and Evil team up in the movie. It's gonna be awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, so the that would be awesome. The B Fighter Input Magnum Premium Bandai Web Exclusive, thirteen thousand two hundred yen November release. That's gonna be expensive. And yeah, that's the news mode. All right, let's get into Revice. Woo! No one type anything into your browsers or phones or devices. Someone in this call or in the chat, tell me what Daddy Ninja's character name is. I'll be impressed if anyone can. Hmm. <laughs> Daddy Ninja. Uh, Tosuke? Is it Tosuke? Have they ever said his name once in the show? Pretty sure they have. His full name? Yeah, Tosuke Usujima. I, I know his family name was Ushi, Ushi, it's Is it Usujima or Ushijima? It's Ushijima. Did they ever say his actual given name once in the show? I don't think they did. And yet, they tried real fucking hard to make us care that he got murdered this week. I mean, like, I just, like, the way it happened and all went down, I was, like, legit, like, oh, fuck. All right. I like, but that, even, I like, I like that even Hikaru even called him dad. Well, he he's yeah. been doing that the whole show, even even after it was revealed that they were a fake family. Yeah, I didn't and expect him to stand in front of him and take the blow either. And but... and and then he's like, "Oh, we need over demons as our fighting force." I'm like, "Oh yeah, okay." You no. you cared about him all along. We get it. And then we and then we found and then we found out the painful truth that apparently like. He had an actual family, like a wife and a daughter. Well, yeah, of and course. They were killed he... by uh, dead man's. Yeah. <laughs> so that was sad. Um, I have to give immense props to whoever directed this episode because the henshins in this were super well done. Yeah. When the three weekend writers henshin together, and then when uh, Iki and Daiji henshin opposite each other so just, good just 
just him sitting there beside his fucking it, dead it, body. I, it was so it's weirdly good. hilarious. Just Hideo just like plops down and has himself a good old sit next to the man he just murdered. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Just really makes you think, huh? Oh was interesting the director also referred to Daiji as family before teleporting him out. Yeah, I I I actually really like this. So because the th the whole show has had a really thick family vibe, now we get like the dark undertones of like your I'm your I'm your father now. You know what I just realized that this you know what this parallels fucking uh Hideo and, and, and Daiji, it's fucking Palpatine and Anakin. <laughs> I was thinking that too. I was totally thinking that too. <laughs> How appropriate you... considering fucking uh, Kenobi just ended this week. That's probably Once... why I was thinking it. <laughs> Once more, Lord Gif will rule the world. And we shall have peace. <laughs> It's like poetry, it rhymes. We shall rule Japan as father and son. Lord Daiji. <laughs> Just fucking... Daiji, Lord Gif is evil. From my point of view, the bathhouse is evil. <laughs> it's not weekend, but the bathhouse. I was going to say, from my point of view, the weekend is evil. <laughs> <laughs> no, weekends aren't evil. They're great. We still we don't... Yeah, all the prequels and it was amazing seeing all those lines in context again we still don't know why they're called weekend nothing makes sense we'll never know That'll yeah i don't know is it because they're like, wait is it because they're ending the 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 perception that humans are weak but then why is it w-e-e-k as the pun i guess i don't know they don't Catchy say name <laughs> Hashtag weekend. It's because they want everybody to work for the weekend. <laughs> Everybody's working oh, for the weekend. Everybody's working for the weekend. Someone has to make Someone... a fucking a music like, video. Music video. <laughs> oh my oh, god! Weekend. I can't go. do that without thinking of Zoolander. <laughs> oh my god! I totally want a weekend music video. <laughs> you could eat. You gotta make it. Uh... I think you would do a great job making it. Just a different, just da -na, da -na, da -na, da -na. Um, I have to say, even though I've been shitting on Hikaru a lot ever since he took the role of Overdemons, I have to admit that he did a really good job trying to be a character this week. That's, that's true. He's like, I'm not yeah. listening to orders anymore. I'll do what I think is right. Yeah, and then, like, Sakura gets, like, super fucking pissed off, and then, like, Aguilar tries to, like, comfort her, but she, like, yells at her, and she's like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to yell at you. This is, actually, then... this is actually a really nice scene, because it reminds us that Hana has no fucking clue how to be human. She has That's... no idea what she's doing, but she's gonna try anyway. Yeah, she's trying her best to, like do what she thinks can help and i'm like nah you're trying Good i'm just you. i'm just gonna hug you till you're better she just became a human so mm -hmm. well kind of yeah. i love i love i love too that like uh when nikki and vice go to like confront uh confront uh veil or whatever like that like just vice is just like Icky, are you okay like you seem like your hands are shaking he's like oh dude i'm fucking terrified but like i gotta do this yeah that's the one they were gonna go to find Daiji. Um, Vice is sort of like, you sure you don't want to just bail right now? <laughs> Let's go home, have another bath. And then these, then then he, they just scraped each other across a building for. The fight was rad. It was pretty cool. Um, and like I said, also... the 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 henchin, so well done. The fucking cuts. The the you that one shot where you it's a wide shot and you see them standing on either end and as you see them actually do the motions for the henshin you see close ups along the top and bottom, that's fucking brilliant. Why don't they do that more? That's going know, right maybe. in my top five henshins. Maybe they will. Railway or anything can happen now. Like, um, that's also, going right also, in my favorite henshins along with Duke Dragon Fruit Energy. Michi's first henshin and Akira's henshin from the Tokyo post series movie. 
What's the what's the mom's name again? Yukimi. Yeah, Yuki. Yeah, freaking when Genta and Yuki were having like their fake argument. That was oh yeah, they did a fake fight to make um, Yuki and uh, and uh, make him acknowledge that him and Dodge used to fight and get over fighting. I get. I'm sorry. I'm. I'm <laughs> I sound weird. No, no, it's fine. So fucking. These two are so fucking cute, though. I love them. Yeah. Um. And and yeah, it it really is an interesting thought to like. Yeah, I know we're fighting for like the fate of humanity, but it's really just two brothers having a fucking fist fight. Yeah, that's all it is. And I'm glad that we finally get Iki yelling at Daiji, bro. I've got my final form. We're good. Piss off. <laughs> yeah, like this is made from gift cells. <laughs> I Good. have I have the thing specifically designed to alleviate the exact thing you're worried about. Calm your shit. But of course, Daiji's not thinking right because of the brilliant writing that the show has that I detailed last week. Yeah. Um. So Hideo now has a fucking Giftarian monster form, and it's terrifying. Yeah, it's pretty scary. <laughs> oh my god he fucked them up he did he's got super speed and strength and we thought he was terrifying when fighting in his human form i know he just took like one glove off and he's like i got the eye hand he did like a giant <laughs> hand drill thing like something out of bayonetta yeah bayonetta. no more for me bayonetta uh, and then, yeah, Hikaru was about to get murdered, and then uh, Tasuke, if that is his name, steps in and takes the hit. I like little legit when I saw it happen. I was like, no, Daddy Ninja. See? <laughs> We're supposed to care when we barely remember what his fucking name is. No, but like, that's the, the, that's the, just the joke we've been making all fucking yeah it's just it's because it's, it's daddy ninja yeah should, should have taken out a fucking ichibanto it would have been fine i will say i i like what they've done with this character it's a, it's very developed and i understand his motivation and the the the, the re, i i struggle to call it a reveal but the reveal daddy that he, weekender daddy. i love that <laughs> good job blaze he's he, he's a weekend dad <laughs> well he was I guess he. I guess he's no longer living for the weekend. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. I will say it was kind of sad when like they have this conversation as he's dying, and then Hideo asks if he actually loved Hikaru, and he's already dead and can't answer. That was. Yeah. Actually, that was actually kind of sad. Yeah. <laughs> and then he just, and then he just <laughs> plop. <laughs> you ruined well, it, well, Hideo. I almost cared. Looks at the picture and he's just like, huh. But yeah, oh. no. What a what a what a good way to like end the character. I just again like I'm just kind of glad that like this is what Saber was lacking, like sacrifice and emotion like, emotional I, gravitas. I know Emily hates. I know Emily hates when I say this, but like death makes the show interesting. <laughs> no, I I was I thought you were gonna say I know I know that Emily hates Saber was what I thought you were gonna say. No, no, no. <laughs> like I remember. Like, I never because, said like, I hated Saber. I just keep forgetting it even happens. No, I just because like last last year when Sa when we were talking about Saber, I just was complaining that I'm like like no one fucking died. Like there wasn't anything like you know making it like. No, worse. there's a there's it, a difference between having it just be there to be like edgy and sad for no the, and and. Have... The difference is not that death exists. It's that there is emotional gravitas and actual consequence to actions. Exactly. Yes. There's more consequence exactly. in this there, show. That there, really there, can, there can be emotional gravitas and consequence in a narrative without death. But death is just one of the most common ways to wrap everything up in a bow with regards to a particular narrative or a character arc. You know what I mean? Okay, well, like... See with 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 Saber again. Like I'm sorry going into this, but like when, when me and Ichi watched the B Cinema and like we talked about, that made me appreciate Saber like a bit more, and then uh, enough to actually get me convince me to get me a, get a sword driver. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So Saber Saber did something. 
But yeah, so the episode ends with Hideo spiriting Daiji away, basically going, Don't touch my son! Give me back my son! <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that would be hilarious if, like, so next week we're going to see that Genta wants to become Kamarada Veil vale again, and then he just marches up to Hideo, Give me back my son! Give me back my son! And yeah, next um, week we're getting the Demon Squad! Yeah, the one on the left is way better looking! Agreed! <laughs> Yeah, we've seen other shots of them from farther back, and yeah, the over demons one looks better. But they are just reskins. They're just reskins of Zek trooper suits. Oh, Gen I can't wait to see Genta versus Vale. That's just going to be such an awesome fight. But the thing is, as these, as the episodes of the Vale special told us, if Vale die, if either of them die, the other one does. Oh, that's true. So I don't see this ending well. Oh god, it'll just be with it'll just end up with George fucking holding up the demon's driver, trying to absorb Veil vale again, and then also set himself on fire. <laughs> you want you want to be like, a demon Veil? Vale? You got it, and everything that goes with it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah, Lord Gimp, I'm ready for my third and final wish. I want to be an all-powerful rider! <laughs> Phenomenal demonic powers! Itty bitty hench and belt. I'll show, <laughs> I'll show you how much of a demon I can be! <laughs> <laughs> I oh. love the idea that Vale is just Jafar. <laughs> 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 he just, you know, he finds out he finds out Genta's still alive and like the he's trying to find his veil driver. Wait, where is it? No! No! <laughs> just looks at Genta Street Rat. <laughs> I remember just, when you were just a street rat. Just Lord Gif, just diamond in the rough. <laughs> the Lord Gif is the cave of wonder. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The Gif of Wonders. The Gif of Wonders! <laughs> That's the name of this episode, Gif yep. of Wonders. <laughs> and the title is going to be something to that effect. <laughs> the thumbnail is going to be good. <laughs> oh, thank you, Aladdin. You you still bless us with... So, Aladdin, I love it when you guys like start quoting Aladdin. Everything yep. either goes back to Aladdin or Space Jam. Yo, that, that Heracross that's version that's of Veil vale is fucking sick! Yeah. That's what I wanted. Oh, is that Unholy Unholy Live? <laughs> I guess. Oh, oh, no, that's Pokemon. Yeah, they're Pokemon. Tyrantrum, oh, yeah, Revi, uh, Noivern, Live, uh, Arbok, Jean, and Heracross, Vale. Heracross, Vale, that's badass. Right? That's what I wanted over demons to be. <laughs> Um, alright, well anyways, Domuraco! I said Jean, Blaze! <laughs> yeah, Ichi's dad's not a common rider. Don't dox me, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Hot off the trail of the previous episode, Siyoshi is apologizing and saying he'll quit the Don brothers. And that's when Kaito drops us another bit of interesting information. The only way to get out is to quit, which we've seen happen, or finish all of the work. Yeah, I guess just feed all the monsters? I guess. We don't know for sure that that's the end game, because, like, what happens when we run out of Sentai? Okay. So... <laughs> I, I last week I was <laughs> I was praising how like interesting and stuff Jiro was as a character. Holy fuck, was he annoying this episode? Oh yeah, he was trying his best. He was tailing and freaking simping on fucking Taro so fucking hard doing everything. On everyone, which even, he did it even to Taro. You know what end. it was? It was that episode of SpongeBob where Patrick thinks he has to do exactly what SpongeBob does the entire time. Oh Christ! It was so uh, cringe watching Jiro just be like everyone. No, and then his the, attempted the, haiku was my favorite part. No, the the one where it was when Jiro went up to Haruka and like he came up with an idea for a manga <laughs> and he just whispers in the air, 
you can plagiarize it if you want. And I was like, fuck you, you piece of shit. That's too far. I, I actually <laughs> laughed my ass off as Haruka just throws his papers everywhere. <laughs> Also, you knew brother just taking the dog food he's offered. Oh, he's got like the dog instincts. That fucking that was hilarious. And also, my other note I put down was the guy who becomes this week's this week's monster of the week. The game he was trying to beat was clearly Monster Hunter. Was it? It looked like God Eater. Yeah, I think it was God Eater Three. Because it it has to be like a Bandai game, I think. Bandai Namco, yeah. So I I I don't think it was an actual game because like, no. like the the. I think yeah, it was God Eater. It, I'm pretty sure it's an actual game. I think it was one of the God Eater games. That, yeah, they've done, so they, then, they've then shown it before. God, whatever God Eater is, then it's plagiarized Monster Hunter. It's, what, it, uh, it's a very similar what, game. That's what Kirame Yellow played in uh, Kira Major. Yeah. He was like a God Eater player. Um, um, yeah, yeah, Jero with the fucking haiku, and he just like looks at him just like, the, the sky out. is blue. The like, sky is blue. Ah, the sky is blue. The, the sky Ichi, that is was blue. Basically the, that was basically the closest to it snowing on Mount Fuji. Ah, so. <laughs> uh, it's no oh my god! The intro update. They Were put like just popping in from the top of the screen. They put Jiro in upside down in two shots, and I'm like, what the fuck it's, is happening? It's, it's, it's Takaharu all over again, except without actually blowing him up like a firework. <laughs> just, yeah, he's upside down. <laughs> so wait, does this mean we're gonna get another ranger upside down on the other side? Because now it's just asymmetrical and it's annoying. Well, yeah, we're getting like what Don Don Murasame. Yeah, there you go. That'll uh, probably be Sono. I hope it is. That would be awesome. Oh, have him switch. That would yeah, that would be neat. This way we get the Stacy arc, but faster. Also, uh, he he goes to like Kishido's like important business meeting, and he's like, "I want to invest in this project. It's so good." Puts down ten yen, and Kishido's like, "The fuck are you doing? You made it look like my project's only worth fucking ten fucking cents." That was so I thought, good. I thought at first the implication was that he was trying to bribe the other guy, but no, it's like I want to invest in his idea. Here's ten cents. <laughs> And then, yeah, he goes to, like, Taro's, like, work, and he's, like, doing everything exactly the way he does. And then even Taro just looks at him, he's like, Kay, bro, the fuck are you doing? I love that Taro waited the entire fucking day to just look over him and go, what the fuck? Dude. It took all that time, I guess. And then, <laughs> just like, hey, Momoi Taro-san, do you have anyone you idolize? No. Cool, then I'll do just like you and not idolize you anymore. But wait, that that's not how that works. <laughs> and so yeah, he like goes to he goes to like lunch or dinner with them at a restaurant and he's like, Oh well I'm gonna be like your successor and take over if like anything happens to you and Taro's like, No, there's only one me. No one can be my successor. You're you're basically my other companion. And then he drops his meat and then turns evil. Yeah, oh, no. Before before that, before we get before we get further into that, that yeah. that meal they were having, that was supposed to be his welcome to the team party that everyone else oh, bailed yeah, on. Want, yeah, he <laughs> gave out invitations at the beginning, but then he just got them all back, which was horrible. Well, it's because they thought he thought he was there. He was being like selfish because he was throwing a party for himself. <laughs> At least Taro showed up. It is kind of cringe that you throw your own welcome party, you know. That's that's fair, I guess. But also, it's cringe to not go. But yeah, so basically, Jiro hears what like Taro says to him, and basically, he like kind of snaps equivalent of homelander from the boys <laughs> jiro's got some dark alter ego in him and i think and he doesn't seem to remember his actions after either i think then, i think it is i think it has something to do with his tiger form because like that's what i do at first. I, I think it is intrinsical to the fact that he has two different forms his two different power sets yeah because when he sw he switched you saw that you see that little tiger emblem flow around him Hmm. So he's got some sort of dark other half that we're gonna have to deal with for the rest of the season. Now, now I was annoyed. I was annoyed with Jiro like throughout most of this episode, but I gotta say, when he was evil, he was pretty fucking cool. He was scary. 
Yeah, you could, like, pretty take, pretty their, take their glasses and then take their whole power set. Yeah, what the fuck? Why is he able to just steal their powers? That's bullshit. Sixth Ranger powers, man. Wow. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Also, the monster of the week was cool because he's based off uh, Jew Ranger, and I like that. Like his monster form is basically like the emblem from the coin. The, it's like the the yeah the coin emblem of like all five uh, Zords. That like, was a really of... really interesting design. Yeah, clever design. I love that. Yeah, Vegas. You're right. It it, it kind of smelled of Shadowborg the way he just went around stealing their powers. And you know what that means? We need a white. Blast it on, brother! <laughs> uh, also, Inu brother finally used his weapon as Ninja Star. Yeah. Although, yeah. I'm still- I, I can't believe we're into 6th Ranger story territory, and we still don't have the entire team actually hanging out together. No, because they're really trying to, like, freaking uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Innovate. Uh, no, they're just really trying to keep this freaking Kijino Subasa thing going. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that happening, which I think we might be getting a bit more on next week. They've been, like, foreshadowing a lot of stuff related to that, so... Probably oh. soon. But, like, also. The, the, the fact that we haven't unearthed this whole Natsumi Miho mystery doesn't mean that Subasa can't hang out with everybody. Like, the, I think it would be better if they spent more time knowing each other as friends, as part of the group, for a much more emotional payoff when everything's finally out in the open. Also, also, after this episode, I never want to hear you can do it in Japanese ever again. God! God. I, I, no, I was just imagining because she said she was going to say that to him 10,000 times. So I just like 10, to imagine. 10,000 like, like, times like, will give like, you such a no. crick in the neck! No, he's taking like a shower and she's just like outside the shower and he's like sleeping and she's just still saying it. He's at work. He's, she's still saying it. I can imagine it, honestly. They're, they're, like in the middle, they're in the middle of a hot sex session and he's, she's just fucking saying He's like, I can do it. I can do you. No. He can. They're married. I mean, yes, but also no. <laughs> um, and and yeah, like back to Hall Jiro trying to be nice to everyone. It's like Haruka, you can plagiarize my manga. Sarahara, I wrote this terrible haiku. Kijino, you should break up with your wife if she's causing you problems. <sighs> <laughs> the, the fucking balls on this man. This. Are we? I don't think this guy knows how to be human either. No. He said he couldn't. He couldn't. Um. Was, what was it exactly? I have it written down. Sorry. That he has to take a cold bath in order to wake up. Yeah, he's like not a morning person, and he mentioned he has to be in a cold bath or shower or whatever for an hour. Holy hell! And I thought I had problems waking up. I thought it was because right. of the whole training under cold water thing. I mean, my, I mean, my new alarms, my new wake up alarm is the uh, the alarm from like an Imperial Star Destroyer. So that's awesome. Oh yeah, because like I spent I spent the week like uh, finally like adding like custom notification sounds to like my different apps I use, and my my favorite one is my new email notification where it's just Kelly Chambers from Mass Effect Two going, Commander, you received a new message at your private terminal. <laughs> I need to look into that. It's so good. My my morning wake up alarm is the fucking sound when Comrade Cross henshins because the first thing the belt says is wake up, <laughs> wake really up, good. wake up, burning, get cross dragon. Man, I need to put custom alarm sounds on my phone. Mine is just the uh the like uh alien cosmic noise. Yeah. I, my alarm used to be a duck, and then sometimes I'd have like dreams, and my dreams would end with a duck. But have a duck and then you could do it. Yeah, like I'd just I'd be having the most intense dream. I turn over, I just see a duck going, quack, 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 quack. It's amazing when Doctor, things are am I crazy? <laughs> it just like influenced them. Like one time I fell asleep while the news was on, I had a dream about the Terry Fox run, and I found out that's because there was a thing going on on the news about it. Wow. <laughs> I love that, like, we go through this whole thing of Don Dorogoku stealing everyone's powers, and, like, it seems like he's going to kill them all, 
And then Haruka, after having her power stolen, <laughs> her face. just comes in and slaps the shit out of him. Oh, Har Haruka, like, I love her. She's, she's really so cool. She's really developing as a character. Like, on one hand, she's becoming slavishly devoted to Momotaro, which I'm kind of eerie, like, cautious about. But then also she does shit like this, and I'm like, all right, maybe you are a character. <laughs> Um, also, like, you think I would be annoyed with, like, frickin' Romy Park just, like, screaming stuff, but no. They'll never, they'll never not get old. This is week two. Let's see how you feel by the end of the show. Oh, it's Romy really Park. Like I love heroes. her going fucking... What? <laughs> I'm kind of angry that, like, his actual henshin doesn't say Don Dorogoku, but his fucking altar form does? <laughs> The tiny little oh, yeah. dragon robot. He turned into a little Lego dragon. Yeah. Um, um, another thing I was very surprised to see this episode is that apparently dying and being brought back to life humbled Momoi a little bit. He's actually praising the other members of his team now. But he's so made sure to say only one. Yeah, Arca, yeah, Arca's like, say it again. He's like, no, things like that can only need to be said once. And I was just sitting there going, no. I, I hate to repeat it. myself. What? Um, But yeah, like, I, I, I will admit, Momoi Taro has experienced some character development. I will applaud him for that. He, he's learning a little bit of humility, modesty, and trust in his freaking allies that have proven themselves to be of use. Yeah. And then after after they defeat the giant monster, the Zoo Ranger gear drops weirdly into Jiro's hand instead of Kaito's, and then it turns into the Dragon Ranger gear. Yeah, it was just like, oh, Green Ranger. Um, yeah, so oh. Momoi apologizes, and they're all doing their... their and, I, and I love that, like, while they're all arguing, Jiro's there on his knees apologizing, and they're just like, no, you stay down! Um, yeah, so, so next week we're going to see, uh, him use the Dragon Ranger gear and someone, uh, post that image that I took in the Neo spoiler chat because the prop they're using for the Dragon Dagger is fucking awful. Instead of using one of their actual toys with actual like plastic and metal scaling and all that, it looks like they're using some terrible foam toy. Probably it's probably the original Dragon Dagger from like the original show. It just it's been like in storage for so long. I don't know if the original was a foam toy. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? What does that mean? I don't know. It means um, <laughs> Also also Taro went up to like Sonoe and he was just like So you wanted to kill me which you did, but then you brought me back? Why? And he's like, I don't want to uh, answer that. And he's like, cool, okay. bye. <laughs> all right, see ya. <laughs> That's all I um, need. Their relationship is very interesting. Yeah. I loved when Soda we went up to go fucking hit him and just fucking Taro just de and He's just like, yeah, what the fuck are you going to do? <laughs> Damn it, like, you, ruined my, you ruined my fun. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look kind of, it doesn't look foamy. Zoom think. in real close. Let's see. Hang on. It's not nice. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, again, I think that's actually the original Dragon Dagger from like Zoo Ranger. <laughs> I feel like it would be Absolutely. a lot more decayed if it was. <laughs> decayed, decayed. Speaking of decayed, I, I saw an album get posted earlier this week of like 50th anniversary covers of writer songs by other writers, artists. Like, yeah, fucking Be Beverly did the Kuga theme and Journey Through the Decade, and I was like, holy shit! And the Kabuto theme, I think. Yeah, no, Beverly's an amazing singer. Yeah, the, the Decade song is amazing. Let's make a boy. And yeah, there's like 50th anniversary versions of a bunch of different writer themes sung by other artists who've done other writer themes. It's pretty cool. Wait, why are we looking at... I think, oh, I, th okay. I think those are songs from the, uh, from the, the cover album. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did Alan's theme? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it looks like next week we're going to see the Dragon Ranger power. I think the monster of the week for next episode is based on Jetman. 
Uh, and looks like more of Subasa looking for Natsumi. Yep. It's this weird gesture, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So we're gonna move on to our future topic. Uh, okay. Did you want to hang out and listen, or? No, I think I should probably go. But Alrighty. thank you very much for having me and hanging out, guys. Of yeah. course. And uh, take care, everyone. Stay safe. Bye bye. Bye bye. Fine. Happy birthday, Ichi. I know that was yesterday, but I'm trying to say it again. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> And back to Revice. So, the Veil Specials 3, 4, and 5 tell us the rest of the story that connects Shiranami Junpei to Igarashi Genta. Yeah, it was pretty straightforward. So, like, it just, like, I was watching all three episodes and I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Oh, I got that. All right. Cool. Hey, that guy got stabbed by impaled by Veil. That's awesome. He got impaled. Impaled, yeah. <laughs> but like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to get so far ahead for episode five, but just I love fucking Karazaki just getting set on fire. <laughs> yeah. Then now we know how he got burned. <laughs> how to get burned? How to get burned? <laughs> because apparently, putting Veil in a Pokeball caused him to combust. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It was too much power for one man to hold. I just love that, like, even after Vale being the person that killed Junpei's family being revealed, he's still like, I'm your buddy! Yeah. <laughs> I also liked the moment when, uh, like, Vale's, like, out, out of the, like, the, the power, uh, the belt, and so, like, he just says to him, he's like, that's just a suit of armor, like, without my power. And I'm like, shit. Here, my question of, about that is, so he, all he needed to be put out into his own form was for him to activate the Hisatsu function of the driver? That doesn't make sense. It should have been, like, all that needed to do was for Junpei to stamp himself with the stamp the same way Iki does with Vice. Activating the finisher on the belt shouldn't have released Veil. Yeah. You know I what know. I mean? Yeah. That was weird, but whatever. Yeah. So, as we see throughout these episodes, Junpei and Yukimi actually fall in love with each other and talk about starting a family. Uh, and then we we discover that the soldier who's been prevalent in these episodes is, in fact, Busan. His real name is Irabu. And he's from yep. an anti-Noah resistance. I, I, I don't know if we mentioned it, but I saw on a screen that apparently Noah stands for Nest of Anti-Human. Huh. Cool name. Yeah. But yeah, I uh, love... It's probably this, this probably anti-Noah thing was what inspired Weekend, most likely. <laughs> Maybe. Actually, yeah, because yeah, cause I guess Boo works for Weekend? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I love that like Yukimi and Junpei were about to kiss at the start of episode four, and then Pusan comes in and cock blocks them. Can't have yeah. an can't have an actual kiss in a tokusatsu, I guess. And they like yeah, they like go to hide in a warehouse, and Boo's just like, "Here, I got you these. Go go kick their asses." Yeah. Also, yeah, like Boo fucking shoots a bunch of dude, like kills a bunch of dudes with a gun. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. And, um, we, and we, then yeah, I like I like. There's a scene where like Boo uh, goes up to like uh, Karazaki, and he's just like he's like, dude, you're like you're you're better than this. Like you should use your brain like intelligence to, like for peace. And he's like, yeah, I'm already too far gone for that. I, I'm too far gone down the path of sin. My yeah. hands stained with blood. <coughs> All that. <coughs> yeah. Aww. Um, I love, we find out where the name Genta came from. It turns out that was a stray dog she had once. Yeah, and then, like, Genta kind of fucks with her, just going, like, so I'm a dog to you? That's it? And he, like, acts all sad, and then he just laughs. He's like, yeah, no, nah, I'm just fucking with you. Genta? Genta, what's wrong? I'm a dog. <laughs> okay, can we talk about when, like, he like gets he get I forgot that like he got plastic surgery so like kind of like made me go well I guess fuck me for complimenting that the younger version of him looked like a younger version of like the older Genta but like 
when he went on to the, the, the plastic surgery, you could tell that was just older Genta sector. Was it? I'm not sure it who was. it was. I, no, it definitely was because his hands were slightly bigger and I could hear his voice and it was exactly the same guy. Well, yeah, they, he's 25 years younger than he is in the main show. They couldn't show his face or else they'd have to do some serious plastic work on actual plastic yeah, work that, on him. No, well, they could have just gotten a different actor. <laughs> But yeah, so they got they got they just got Genta's older actor to just play like him when he got his face changed. You know what would have been the funniest fucking shit ever if that mm -hmm. actor had a son and they just brought him in to play young remodeled Genta. Yeah, it's like in Drive when like we found out like Shinosuke's actor like had a fucking little brother that looked exactly like him and like even cosplayed as him. Yeah. And then like I was like, you could have used him for like a flashback scene. It would have been perfect. Yeah. It would have been so believable. There was probably some um, behind also, the scenes reason they didn't. Also, I liked when Yukumi like like he lost his memory or whatever like that. And she's like, you don't remember me? I'm your wife. <laughs> okay. So does that mean that they started assuming that they were married from that point, which means they were never actually married? They probably got, like, officially married afterwards. I don't know. Like, no, but I like to think. Also, it's just really sweet seeing, like, like, Yukimi, like, older Yukimi just, like, like, cuddling genta when he was like all tired and stuff like, oh, well, so, he, they're, they're so cute this that those shots of her uh, holding him while he's unconscious those happened right after he debuted as veil vale on the show so he's like all fucked up and unconscious oh yeah oh, but you know, it's so good I just, um, I just, yeah, no. I just love that we go through this whole dramatic bloody character arc for junpei becoming genta finding the, the the woman of his dreams and then he becomes a youtuber <laughs> yep <laughs> and he, like they're having dinner and he's like oh i'm so fucking tired soccer is just like you just made fucking videos all day and he's like hey <laughs> it's exhausting that's my day job don't knock it well I'm yeah gonna... i got a, I had a facebook memory recently where like apparently we did like an all-day stream i think we i think we did like super mario party and then uh like some monopoly and I just, like, made a post being like, oh, that was so fucking exhausting, and, like, you apologized for it. And I was like, no, 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 it was still fun. It was just, like, a lot to do. Like, yeah, streaming's yeah. exhausting. Oh, don't. yeah, I know. That's why I took a break from it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the, uh, the episode ends with Hideo showing up and picking up the demon's driver that Masumi <laughs> used to capture Vale. Doesn't fucking say anything. He just has that weird fucking crazy ass smile and look he's got. And I'm like, oh boy, here we go. Yep. Uh, but yeah, so the Veil special overall, good. I enjoyed it. I'm glad we kind of got a bit more lore and more, you know, context to certain characters. So I like, I like world building and Rider. It's always a good time. I, I feel like this would have been better as one movie instead of five episodes. I agree. It should have been like a movie. But I enjoyed like, it. Maybe honestly, honestly you could have just like kept like Genta's past like a mystery throughout the show and then just make like a V cinema afterwards and then we would have been like, "Oh, that's why that's that." Okay. No, I I feel like considering Genta's about to do shit again in the next episode, having full context on his story makes it more impactful. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, I enjoy it. Veil vale, vale is a cool. I like. I like. I like pants. Put more pants on riders, please. Yeah, because like now that we know what his beef with Veil vale is, why he wants to settle things, their showdown is going to be all the more awesome. Yeah, it's going to be great. But yeah, so those are the Veil vale specials. Enjoyed them very much. Yeah, the, the that first was cool. The first episode in particular managed to cram a lot of story into fifteen minutes. Yes, Decker, you're you are right. Also, budget. Yeah. All right, so that is Cast Ranger, which brings us to <gasps> Jikai Ryo Sentai Cast Ranger. Next week, we will finally be talking about the movie Common Rider Beyond Generations. Ooh, well, I'll be I'll be in town next week, so I'll be there for that live. So yay! You and I are gonna reunite just like the father and son did oh my god and we get to see old george which i am looking forward to so goddamn. oh much. yeah i've already watched the movie it's fucking i liked it 
Yeah, I, I saw the henching sequence of like the, the, the and like turning into different riders. It's so fucking cool. And there was like behind the scenes photos of like them like in the suits. Oh it's yeah. So cool. Like I saw like I, I saw, saw those. fucking um Rintaro saw... as Blade. No, freaking um why am I already uh Toma is like an Excel suit and I'm like Oh yeah. I'm I'm just sitting, I'm like I'm looking at the picture I'm like I don't deserve to be in that suit. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ryu suit. It's a red suit that has fire attacks and a sword. But yeah, apparently the new veil form apparently it took some parts from like uh, uh, apparently people are saying they took some parts from uh Shining Assault Hopper and uh yeah, it, uh and and Sentry's like undersuit. Yeah, it's got Sentry's undersuit and Shining Assault Hopper's chest piece and then the helmet is original. Yeah, I can't believe it's actually Toma in the Excel suit. Like that's that's incredible. <laughs> that's bulky. <laughs> oh, he's, having, he's having a good time. Looks like the fucking suit's about to pop out from under the armor. I have the fig. I have the renewal figure out of Excel. It's it's, it's pretty. So now what we need to do is get a figure of Toma and then put his head on the Excel figure, <laughs> and you can reenact this. Yeah, there's oh, Rintaro's there blade. Yep, blades is blade. They had to make the fucking joke. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Christ. Um, yeah, so that's that's our show for today, for this week. Um, thank you all for listening, watching, liking, favoriting, sharing, subscribing, hitting the bell, and being awesome. As always, the uh, Daiji was night. Yep. Is that. Yep. <laughs> Uh, as always, the primary source of our hijinks is castranger.podbean.com. From there, you can find our Facebook, Twitter, Discord, Patreon, merch store, all of our cool shit. And uh, let us know yeah. in the comments uh, what you thought of these episodes and of the Veil specials. And uh, let us know what you're looking forward to in the Tokuverse. Two tickets for Barbie, please. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm probably gonna go see the Barbie movie just because I love Margot Robbie. Is there so. actually a Barbie movie? Yeah, they're making a live action Barbie movie with Margot Robbie, like Harley Quinn is Barbie oh. and Ryan Gosling is Ken. And do you know what the worst sin of all is, Ichi? Oh, they they stated that Barbie Girl will not be in the, a song in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking bastards! Yeah, no, I'm already expecting a petition to be made being like, no, you have to put that fucking song in. Like, I'm sorry. It's, it's just law. And if they don't, there will be endless amounts of music videos made. Don't, someone will edit it in. Yep. <laughs> Anyways, go. If you are if you feel manly enough, go watch, go see the Barbie <laughs> movie next, next summer 2023. If you're comfortable enough in your own identity. No, dude, it, the, ha the half the audience is going to be fucking grown mass fucking men and then like little girls. <laughs> it's going to be really awkward. <laughs> that, that seems absolutely like a movie that people would go to watch just out of sheer morbid curiosity. Also, apparently they're saying that Chris Pratt's Mario voice is going to be something we've never heard before. Yeah, awful. I don't know. We'll see. I can't wait to see this movie. <laughs> yeah, we're all gonna be front row center for that. Well, not literally, uh, but like opening day for sure. Yo, Morbi, Morbin time. Fuck yeah. Well, anyways, Morbius Solus. Uh, all right. Thanks again for everything, and we will see you next week. Bye. -bye.